In the mid-1980s, a man known only as Phil created what is today widely considered to be the first podcast in history. Available only on cassette tape, the Shelby County Community Hour was distributed to newsstands and restaurants in the greater Shelby County area. Until recently, only a few badly damaged fragments were known to exist, but today we are excited to present, for the first time ever, an entire episode of Phil's seminal podcast. Please enjoy. Hello, and welcome to the Shelby County Community Radio Show, your one stop for everything that you need to know about what's going on in your backyard. My name's Phil, and uh, I'm coming to you live on tape, along with my, uh, my friend uh, who joined, uh, joined me here, and he's working a, a tape recorder, and the microphone's over here. This is, uh, you know him, his name's Dragon. You've seen this guy around town. Hey, it's me, Dragon. How's everybody doing out there in Radio Land? <laughs> now, now, uh, Dragon, did you did you get that name uh, because uh, you breathe fire? I mean, I have been known to breathe fire. I've been, I've been shoot. That's all right. Maybe it's because of all the scales uh, that, yeah. that is on that are on you. It's because I got this sick dragon tattoo. Oh, cool. Now, did you get that down at uh, Handsome Doug's uh, tattoo uh, shop that's right next to the, the billiards uh, supply store down yeah. on Sweeney? Yeah, yeah. You know, Doug's a friend of mine. We uh, we used to, you know, we'd go out uh, to the, you know that field out uh, out in the south south of town where everybody would meet oh, up yeah. and drink back in the day? It's top top five fields for me. Yeah, we used to go out there back in the day. We'd take his T-Bird out there and we'd, you know, bring a couple of bottles of Jack Daniels and a, we'd, we'd buy a, a box of Stogies and we'd just hang out in that field with everybody and we'd just be smoking those Stogies and Now, how, how many out. Stogies, how many Stogies at a time were you fellas smoking? You cra- when I know that you're crazy, Dragon, and a lot of smoke doesn't bother you. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, I mean, usually one, but if I got uh, too too much of the uh, the old Jack Daniels, you know, I'd uh, maybe I'd I'd forget I had one in one hand, and then I'd light a second one in the other hand, and then I'd. It's good because it slows you down. You stop drinking the uh, Jack that way. You just well, that, puff it on two two stogies. Now, uh, to to uh, listeners from the community, uh, if uh, you also have fond memories of the field south of town, uh, they're actually having a, a carnival to raise money for the uh, uh, South County baseball team. Yeah, it's uh, this Sunday uh, from eleven until four o'clock. You know, they wanted to not not a. Uh, get in the way of the churches you know they might have some events going on early on so having a little bit later you know i i met my my first wife in that field south of town you did you didn't she just showed up to the field and you randomly met her there she, there's at the parties at the party okay yeah the field parties not nah. I wasn't just standing out there now, during the, the daytime. The, the, that field uh, holds a lot of uh, good memories for me, too, but also a lot of boring ones. Because mm. most of the time, there's nothing going on there. It's only nighttime well, or on the weekend when the when they're the... happening. Okay, that, that's fair. That's fair. Have you been going out there during the day? <laughs> well, I, I, I hadn't put 
two and two together and figured out that it was only at night. I just knew that sometimes there were people there and sometimes there weren't. Oh, right on, right on. So, yeah. Sometimes when you're lonely, you go south of town and see if anything's I'm, I'm happening. Sorry. And maybe that happens on a Tuesday afternoon. I, I, I was not aware that you did not get the invite to those parties. Uh, I shouldn't have brought up the field south of town, I guess. Well, uh, moving on, our, our first, uh, we have sponsors for, for the Shelby County Community Show. Uh, and uh, there's, uh, our first one is for uh, Handsome Doug's uh, Tattoo Shop. It's uh, down there on Sweeney Street next to the uh, Billiards Supply Store. Oh, and, I know uh, Handsome Doug. If you tell him that uh, you, you heard about it uh, on this uh, audio cassette, then he's going to give you 15% off of a small small tattoo. Yeah, and uh, also tell Handsome Doug the dragon says what up. <laughs> Do you know I got this tattoo down at Handsome Doug's? D you don't say. Uh, did uh, you come up with the idea for it so that you could, like, uh, were you already called dragon? Or did Handsome Doug suggest a dragon tattoo, tattoo to you? Here's how it happened. I woke up one summer morning, and I I had had a vision in a dream. It came to me. It was I was, it was a picture of me, but I had a badass dragon tattoo. And everybody was calling me dragon, and I said, I know what I have to do. I went down to Handsome Doug's, and I said. Give me a dragon tattoo. And then tell everybody that my nickname is Dragon. Yeah. That's, that's so interesting when, when you have a premonition and it sets your life on a completely different track. Yeah. I think that God definitely has a plan for me. Yeah. I mean, I know that I met you down at the uh, Biggie Bolarama and it was that dragon tattoo that I just had to ask about. You know, we were doing the tutors down at the bar, and I probably wouldn't have given mm. you a second glance if, if you hadn't flexed that bicep at me and said, don't get burnt. I just, I pointed to you from across the room, and then I pointed to my bicep, and I said, I didn't have to say anything. You were far yeah. away. I, I, I assumed you were saying, don't get burnt, don't mess with me. Uh like uh, many, many folks in Shelby County, I've, I've been punched out a time or two down at the Biggie Bolarama. I got some good memories from hanging out at Biggie Bolarama. You know, I got my first wife's sister pregnant at that Biggie <laughs> Bolarama. Tammy? Tammy? No, dude. <laughs> this was Starla. Oh, uh, okay. Do you remember Starla? Oh, Starla. Well, this we're we're trying to keep this a, a family show here, so <laughs> we, we might not want to be talking about Starla. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That those are not stories for young ears. No. Uh, but you know what? Are uh, down at the Shelby County Public Library uh, on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, they have a story hour uh, featuring. Uh, a lot of childhood favorites from The Cat in the Hat to Good Night Moon, read to you by our own local librarian, uh, Miss Starla Davidson. Oh, is that what she's doing now? <laughs> oh, oh, I'd go to that story time. <laughs> oh, man. No, I, got some I, good, probably... I got some good memories down at that library. As I got in a fight with my second ex-wife's dad. Uh, do you, did you did you win that one, Dragon? I mean, in a, in a manner of speaking, yes. But then she did become my ex-wife, so I guess it was kind of a... I won the first round, but he won the second round, as they say. Okay. In that he convinced his uh, daughter to divorce you? Yes. Yeah. Or 
I, no, I, she I was, just want to make sure. She was pretty sold on it after I whip, whipped her dad's ass at the public library. <laughs> well, I thought maybe you whipped his ass and, and were walking away and, and then he sucker punched you or something. Maybe hit you with a dictionary. Oh, I think maybe if he'd done that, we, we might still be together today. But it was it was really it just seemed like I was it was it was a one sided fight. He wasn't putting up much of it. Mean, you remember him, right? Um Little tiny guy in oh, a wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I beat his ass. I always wondered how how did did they have to use some counterweights for them to keep that wheelchair on the ground? Because he was he weighed nothing. That that, that like chair must have been tipping away. over all the time, yeah. Yeah, I I yeah, well he 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 had a big mouth on him, I'll say that. But I shut him up, I said How do you like this? Iron sides? Then I beat his ass. Now do you do you mean that you literally beat his ass? You tipped him out of the chair? Yeah, I I beat I knocked him because that, that's that's some insult the to chair. injury. And then he just kind of he just fell forward and landed like knees and shoulders with his ass up in the air, and I I vaulted over the over the back of the wheelchair, and I sat on his calves, and then I just started I started beating his ass with both hands and singing Babalu, mm. just beating him like a bongo. Is that the only time you've been thrown out the library? <laughs> yeah. Why else would I go to the library? I've been to the library twice in my life. The first time was when I go I went there on accident because someone said that Hannibal from the A team was signing autographs at the mall. And I was high, and I thought I was at the mall. It and is kind of like time, a mall for books. Yeah, uh, yeah I guess. Yeah, mall for losers. That's that's what I call it. And then the second time, I was drunk, and somebody said that Adama from Battlestar Galactica was down at the mall signing autographs. <laughs> And I was high, and I went down there, and I thought that my my ex-wife's father was Adama. You know, he was on Bonanza, too. Anyways, I got real mad at him, and I started beating his ass. And that's when I got thrown out of the library. They wouldn't let me back after that. I, I tried to go back after that and it was when somebody said that um, Mr. Phelps from Mission Impossible was signing <laughs> autographs at the mall and I was high and I went to the library thinking it was the mall and I was like why am I banned from the mall and they said cause you were in here beating your ex-wife's dad's ass like a bongo drum. I was like, I did that at the library. Oh, they were well. like, this is the library. And I was like, well, then what did I do at the mall? One, one quick question here. Now, I'm wondering if you were to write a book about beating your step, uh, or your, your, your father-in-law's ass like a bongo drum in the library. And then they, in turn, got that book. If you could sign a copy of your book in the library, and, and we could maybe have a bygones being bygones situation. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. It's called If These Hands Could Talk. The beating my ex-wife's dad's ass story. If these hands could talk, they'd say Baba Lou. And then they'd say, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> well, I mean, this is... <laughs> th 
this is neither here nor there, but uh, I hear that Don Johnson's going to be signing autographs down at the library next week. Are you which, shitting uh, me? Yeah, he's, he's going to be there for story hour with Starla and everything. Oh, my God. I got to I gotta set a reminder. I put, put a reminder in my in my day planner to get high on that day. Well, uh, you know, it may be for for the nerdier sort around town, but I mean, we we got a nice library, but there are lots of other things to do besides partying in fields, bowling and librarian. Uh also uh this week uh we 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 got that uh St. Patrick's Day parade coming up. Oh. You a fan of that? Oh, oh, yeah, I got some good memories out of that St. Patrick's Day parade. Now, uh, if you know me, uh, you, you know that uh, I, I like to drive my my green LeBaron convertible uh, in, in the parade. Uh, it, you only have to pay $25 to, to get an entrance in, and you have to be festive in some way. No, uh, you know, normally if you don't wear green, you get pinched. But in this situation, if if you, you, you don't have a green car or or uh, the ability to make a, a green float, then then you just don't get to go into the parade. Yeah, that the first time I got arrested was during that St. Patrick's Day parade. I would I kept trying to get in the parade. I was drunk, and I, I can't, went down. I can't imagine there being any problems that that tat, tattoo you got there of that green dragon just screamed St. Patrick to me. Well, here's what happened. I was I I started drinking pretty early that day, cause you know St. Pat's, and then I get it in my head that I'm going to be in the parade, but I said nobody wants dragon in the parade. How am I going to get? I gotta I got to convince them that I'm a celebrity. So I go over to Henderson's costume shop, but of course they were closed because of the parade. So, I drive all the way out to old man Henderson at his home, and I'm like, get in the car, we're going back, to, you're opening up, and he said, who are you? And I pointed to my bicep, and he said, okay, and he drove me back there, I put on a Snoopy costume, and uh, I went, and I tried to get in the parade, and they said, no, Snoopy, you're not allowed in the parade. You don't have any green on. And uh, I just kept trying to fight my way back into the parade. And uh, the officer O'Hurley, he, he caught me. Caught me by the ears. And he pulled me out of that parade and he threw me in the paddy wagon. There were about 12 other people in there. Because, you know, St. Paddy's Day parade. And long story short, that's where uh, I met my third wife. Now... One quick question. Uh, how did they fit you into that paddy wagon wearing that Snoopy getup? Did they make you take it off? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd take it off all of my clothes underneath because it was very hot. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they threw me right in there naked. And I was slick and sweaty. This was now, so now, now. Were, were the uh, other unruly individuals uh, unruly towards you in that, that uh, situation where I, I can't imagine you felt very safe, naked, and about to go through heat well, stroke from a Snoopy costume, covered in sweat, crammed in, asses to elbows? Well, yeah, they, uh, I pretty much, they threw me in, and I just slid along, along the middle <laughs> of the floor just that cold steel just on a on I was make, making like a trail of <laughs> slick behind me like like a like a huge like slug? a snail like okay. a fat like a fast snail just pew, just well, I going. think it's more like a slug cuz they, they need I, to I, take your shell off your snoopy all shell these, all these drunk bastards dressed like leprechauns all start kicking me yeah that'll happen i, I was going to say uh, I've been in a paddy wagon once, and I was just because I was I was too drunk to handle myself, and I'd vomited upon myself. 
but I found out that that was a good self defense mechanism inside because nobody oh, wants yeah. to wants to mess with with someone who's covered in in vomit. Yeah, yeah. These guys, I can handle myself drunk. Don't worry about that. These guys are all kicking me. I jump up and I manage to tie all of their suspenders together. So they're all tied together back to back like a big drunk Irish starfish. Just all swinging. They're spinning around like a whirling dervish. We show oh. up at the jail. We show up at the county jail. And they open that back door. And it was like a beam of light came in. And I saw the face of an angel. That was my third wife, Bonnie. She was she was working as a, a, a corrections officer. And uh, I knew right then and there that she was going to be the next special lady in my life. That's a beautiful story. I mean, it didn't it didn't last. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you never know. Uh, St. Patrick's Day's uh, uh, parade coming up next week. Maybe you get booked uh, for for uh, yeah. you know a blind another blind date with Bonnie. Maybe uh yeah. Maybe I'll get myself shit housed. See if I can't rekindle that flame. Now, now, I, I just also want to point out that this is just a few days before Don Johnson will be in town. So you want to behave yourself well enough that I can come down there mm -hmm. and bail you out. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Don't mm -hmm. don't do anything too criminal. Don't want to. Yeah, don't want to get held over the weekend. That's the long weekend. They're gonna keep me in there while Don Johnson's in town. Yeah, I, I hate those uh, prison in-service days. I loved them when I was in school, but when they do it at prison, and you're just like, is somebody going to show up to feed me? I haven't ever gotten a change of clothes. I'm still covered in vomit over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, that takes me back. I wish Bonnie would take me back. Oh, drag! I'm sorry. Not in front. Not in front of the people. Uh, so, uh, move, moving on. Moving on. The uh, Shelby County basketball team is uh, going to state. Uh, do you do you reckon they got much of a chance of uh, not embarrassing us this year? <laughs> The, the Shelby County basketball team has not won a championship. I mean, since since back when they were playing with a peach basket. Back then, that they, the team was called they were they were called the uh, they were called the Carlinsburg uh, washing machines. Uh huh. This I, back, heard, I heard back then the the whole reason that they had tall people play basket ball was just so they could then get the bat the ball out of the peach basket and they make them go sit down yeah back Nobody then likes you know, watching some tall ungainly guy try oh. to move his body like keep it slow and just reach up grab that ball and then get out of view y you know uh, uh you know tommy Tommy, I know, I know, like I know three Tommies. Oh, oh, Big Tommy. Yeah, I know Big Tommy. Yeah, that freak. I've seen, I, I, I've seen him try to drive a go kart. You imagine him <laughs> trying to get in the go kart? <laughs> God damn! Oh, that was he must have been. I mean, his knees were probably over his head. I don't know how he did it. I wanted you know, to Tom, laugh at him, but I was I was mesmerized. You know, Tommy and I, uh, we accidentally uh, hijacked a United Airlines flight one time. Just just a misunderstanding. I'm 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 guessing. Well, we were drunk, and uh, 
we we thought that we were going to a, a Halloween costume party. On an airplane? Well, no, we were drunk. We got told that it was at uh, our buddy at our buddy Gordy's house. But uh, yeah, we we got it confused uh, because but. Buddy's address and the flight number on the on the plane were the same number. I get you. I get hey, that could he happen lived, to anybody. Yeah, he lived on eight two five United Airlines Street, and we were you know three sheets to the wind, and we just saw eight two five United Airlines, and we were like, "This is a weird house." Yeah, I could imagine you being very confused. Here. Lots of people showing up, but they're all sitting in chairs facing all the same way. Nobody's having a conversation with anybody else. Nobody's listening to rock music. Everybody's drinking out of little tiny cups. What the... What the heck do you... would you do with that party? Like, why would you invite someone that you like to a party if that's what was going to happen? Yeah. Well, so we get on that plane, and I... we. I had decided to go to the party as Yasser Arafat, and then he, uh, to Tommy was, uh, he was dressed up as the Ayatollah. Classic Big us, Tommy. <laughs> biggest, started, biggest dang Ayatollah I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thought we were in a fight with somebody who was dressed up like an airline pilot. It turned out it was an airline pilot. There was a there was a reporter from the Washington Post on the plane, and he yeah. saw this, and he. Uh, I think I remember you telling me a story about this before. I think didn't they tell you that? Yes, you can smoke your stogies on this this flight, but no, you cannot put them out on the other passengers. Is that that accurate? We said we have permission from the owner of this house to be smoking stogies at this party. And they said, this, sir, this is not a party. And I said, you're goddamn right, this is not a party. Because you keep trying to ruin my vibe. And that's when the pilot came out, and that's when the fist started flying. Anyways, this reporter had a cell phone, and he uh, he called his editor, said that Yasser Arafat and the Ayatollah, <laughs> the Ayatollah, who is way taller in person than you'd think, <laughs> they just hijacked a plane. Well, uh, I, I hope Big Tommy ain't too mad at us for, for telling these, these tales when, when uh, he's, he's currently in a political race, running for county commissioner. Don't don't hold that against it. That's a long time ago, folks. Hey, listen. It's good to know that you have a commissioner who can handle himself in a fight with an airline pilot. I I I, I agree. The odds were very much stacked against you guys, and I think you did did the whole county proud that night. Yeah, turns out that guy was a war hero. He shot down like seventeen Japanese zeros over the South Pacific. <laughs> he could not handle himself in a fight for shit. I mean, I was holding him down, and, and Tommy was just giving him a big pink belly. <laughs> was he was he was he saying Baba Lou while he was doing it? <laughs> he was he was <laughs> he was singing. I don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I can guarantee you that, that that's not the sort of uh, work ethic that uh, Big Tommy would bring to the office of county commissioner. Oh, shit. Oh, he, shit. Every, oh, yeah. every I would be dotted, every T crossed, and uh, anybody who looked crossways have a, a fist in their chin. Yeah, I, I should say, just as a disclaimer to Tommy, who I consider a close friend, uh, he did find Jesus, and he refuses to return my calls now. So, uh, yeah, don't. Don't let my stories get in the way of Tommy's political interests. So, uh, do you know anything uh, about what uh, what led him to finding Jesus? 
Well, it actually was that the the plane. People that always we were... say that all the time, and I'm I'm wondering. I'm starting to think that I'm I'm not gonna like I, I've been going to church my whole life, and and when when's he gonna speak to me? Oh, what wait wait what 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 church do you go to? Oh, you know uh, the uh, the good one. There's a... the good church. We read the good book. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I know that church. Yeah, a man stands up there and says, uh, now everybody be good, and if you do, we're, we'll, we'll have cake after this with some Kool-Aid. You know, <laughs> I got some I got some good memories of that church. That's, <laughs> that's where my, that's where my third wife left me. Bonnie? Yeah, long story. Actually, no, it was a short story. Uh, <laughs> I told her we were going out on a date, and I told her that I got tickets to see a a, a hypnotist down at Yuck Yucks, the, the old comedy club that was down there next to the shoe carnival. <laughs> well, I was, I was tripping on acid, and I just... I had gone to a church, the good church, uh, but I thought that it was a, a hypnotist at a comedy club, and I took her back the next week. I was like, I saw this guy last Sunday morning. He was so good. Mm-hmm. You bring up We show point, up at just church, and she said, Dragon, you have a problem. And I said, you're goddamn right I have a problem. It's called this nag of a wife. Yeah, that... I, I, I think that the, you've indirectly stumbled upon uh, the, the answers to almost every problem. Why, why aren't there more people being trained to be hypnotists? Because if you were a preacher and a hypnotist, you could hypnotize the whole congregation and they'd believe you and uh, they'd all be good. If, if, if you're a comedian down at Yuck Yucks, you can just uh, hypnotize the entire crowd uh, to, you know, go crazy. Clap their hands and laugh, laugh, laugh through all of your jokes. And uh, if you were a hypnotist, you, you, you might still be on your first wife. God damn. So why are we not spending more of our money on hypnotism schools? I'm I'm gonna go talk to Big Tommy when we're done done making this radio show, because I think that that might be the secret to to all of the problems. More hypnotism. He just, just uh, he just swings a little uh, pocket watch back and forth, and then everybody in the crowd asks Jesus into their hearts. Do you think he really takes away all your sin? I don't know. That was always uh, confusing to me because so, some people have more of it than others. Yeah. I'd be I like, mean, hey, he there's never a couple fooled? of these I'd like to hang on to for my spank bank, if you know what oh. I mean. <laughs> hey, don't take away all my sins. Some of this stuff was pretty good. Yeah, you, you, I don't, I don't know if, uh, if I could rightly call you Dragon if he took all your sin away. Shoot, yeah, no. You'd have to probably get that tattoo turned into just like a, like a gecko or something. Some sort of lizard. Oh, maybe like an angel. But like a, like an angel with a sword. You know? Like an archangel? Like, kind of like a fucking viking or something. He's... Just buff, buff as hell, like Lou Ferrigno with a big pair of wings. Now I don't know why they always give them swords. I think that they should give them uh, even even bigger battle implements, like oh, a like double-headed axe. axe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. And then and then everybody could call me Archangel. That'd be pretty fucking cool. It would be pretty cool. I mean, it's an it's 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 a little bit longer than dragon. 
Yeah, I guess. Do you think it'd be harder for people to remember my name if I changed it to Archangel? I don't know. Like, I think that people might just start calling you Angel. That sounds like a little girl's name to me. Or like a very big Hispanic guy. That's true. So, two types of angels. Sweet little children. Big, tough Hispanic guys. Hey, what else is going on in our community? <laughs> It's okay if we take a quick break. I'm gonna I'm gonna go use the bathroom real quick. Well, the next uh, segment on uh, on this program, uh, we, we got to talk about the International RC Car Festival that's going to be going on in about a month's time. Now, uh, I I know that uh, the very moment that I saw my first remote controlled car. And I thought that the future is right now. I, I could barely fathom how that was even happening. And, oh, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, and, and you and I and just about all of Shelby County's uh, wild about RC cards. Yeah, uh, I, that, when that traveling salesman came to town with his uh, suitcase full of RC cars, I, he was out there in the, in the parking lot of uh, Elder Beerman. And he was he had one of those little dune buggies just ripping around. I said, "What kind of witchcraft is that?" You it's you mean to tell it's me the only kind of witchcraft I can get behind? I can tell you that. I said, "You mean to tell me you got a little mouse in there trained to just put the pedal to the metal? You gotta do donuts around the parking lot here?" He said, "No, no. See this thing I'm holding my hand." That steers the car. And, and I said, uh, then, yeah, I, I, I know that I said, how is that even possible? It, the, the steering wheel for the car is inside of the car. I said, Where, let, where's this wire you got connected here? He said, there's no wires. This is all done by the radio. I was like, <laughs> excuse me? You mean to tell me the radio isn't just for listening to music? Now, uh, at some point in time, uh, this program you're listening uh, to right now uh, could possibly be broadcast over the radio. Right now, you know, you, you, you pick up your cassette tape next to the penny saver down at the, down at the Rural King, uh, but... Could you imagine if uh, us talking o over the radio could control a car? <laughs> I mean, listen, it is it is on the radio sometimes. Cause uh, what I do, I'll uh, sometimes when I'm washing my Fiero, I'll just leave it running, and I turn the radio on, and then I'll take a I'll take Mister Microphone, and I'll take it in the house. And I'll set it down in front of the hi-fi, and I'll put your tape on. And then I'm just blasting you out the windows of my Fiero just to piss off Mr. MacArthur down the street. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, 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 I think I lied a, a few moments ago when I said that the RC car is the only kind of witchcraft I can get behind because Mr. Microphone is okay in my book. Yeah, yeah, Mister Mike. Hey, that, what about this? What if we could uh, build us a car? What what was controlled by Mister Microphone? I think we could do it, and maybe we could even get a sponsorship from uh, Turn Ron, Co Ron Ron Turn Co to, to, to to have the first Mister Microphone controlled car, and maybe we could win the International RC Car Grand Prix with the Mister Microphone car. Go faster! Yeah, I could get behind Rubbing that. Rubbing is racing. Intimidate him. <laughs> Win the race! Now, 
how how much does it cost to go to this RC car uh, race, the the Grand Prix? Uh, entry fees are uh, twenty dollars, but that 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 doesn't get you into the Grand Prix. That gets you into opening heats. Oh, so, so, oh, so oh. it's twenty dollars and uh, your own expertise that, that that guarantee your entry into the Grand Prix. I meant just for a ticket to watch. Oh, that's free. You gotta be shitting me. Where yeah, where is this? That. Oh, it's it's down inside the beer garden at the at the RC Car Festival. Oh, well, that makes sense that they'd have it that weekend. Uh, I mean, otherwise, that'd be pretty weird. I, the, I think mostly it'd be weird that they had the beer garden for the RC Car Festival set up on a weekend that isn't the, well, for the RC it, Car it Festival. Used, it used to be outside. Like, this might be where your confusion is, is that they had such poor turnout for the Grand Prix because nobody wanted to leave the beer garden because they bought all those tickets to get beers and they couldn't take the beers out of the beer garden and, you know... If you want to come back in and go back out again, you got to wear one of those stupid bracelets somebody wants to. So, why the. You know, you're going to go down and get in that beer garden and you're going to stay there all day long. So, if you got a big race you want everybody to see and you don't have it in the beer garden, then it's not that big of a race and not that many people are going to see it. <laughs> yeah, I remember I got thrown out of that beer garden one time. Oh, yeah? Mm hmm. This is before, back before it was the RC Car uh, Festival. Oh, wait, back when it was Pine Pinewood Derby? Yeah, yeah, Festival. back when they would do the Pinewood Derby, they had the beer garden set up. And, well, I thought that I was... I, <laughs> first of all, I was, I was on PCP. This was back when I had that, when I had that problem with PCP. Uh, now I can handle it. So I was on PCP and I got it into my head that I was about to be interviewed by Kurt Loder for MTV News. I can't tell you why I thought that. But I kept telling somebody that I needed I needed to get my face powdered because it was you know, I was going to look too shiny under the lights. Mhm. Mm I said, bring the makeup plus, girl back in Plus, here. you're going to be on TV with young, fresh-faced Kurt Loader. He's going to make you look bad. They said, Dragon, Dragon, snap out of it. This is not the MTV News studio. And I said, you're goddamn right, it ain't. This is the MTV Propaganda Studios. Then I, I kicked a big punch bowl over, and they threw me out. Well, I can kind of understand it in that situation. I, I hope I hope they didn't say anything they couldn't take back, but I don't know. Have you ever spent all day trying to make a perfect punch and then have somebody just tip over all of that perfect punch that you were going to serve to... Yeah. It's, it's one yeah. of the things that has made me the angriest in my life. Well, here, this is what happened, and this is funny that you say you hope nobody uh, said anything that they couldn't take back. As it turns out, this was the day I was marrying my fourth wife, and I had agreed that we would get married at the Pinewood Derby Festival. Mm -hmm. And I kicked that punch bowl right into her white dress, and she said, I have never loved you. Oh. I was just trying to make your brother jealous. Well, just like like punch isn't going to come out of a white wedding dress, those those words aren't going to come. That stain ain't going to come out of your soul. Yeah. Well, we ran over, we ran over to the the courthouse across the street, and we eloped right then and there. And it was a very contentious four and a half years of my life. Sounds the. Was it a competition to see who could put up with it the longest? Well, 
I kind of like the idea of pissing my brother off. And, yeah. and uh, as it turns out, she she did not mean make him jealous like that. Uh, we never did have sex, and I believe that he, she was, in fact, having an affair with my brother the entire time. So, sounds sounds like he pulled a fast one on you, Dragon. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. You yeah, had to I'm do all that, 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 that bread, bread earning and uh, all, all those uh, honeydew lists and whatnot, and, and your brother was coming around back, and oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, well, damn. I don't know. Some, some of the crazy stuff you've done over the years is starting to make a little more sense to me. Live I'm, and learn, I guess. Yeah. But that, that that's why this program is... Uh, uh, valuable to all, all the listeners in Shelby County. We give you all the information uh, that you need to know on what's going on around town, but also maybe uh, some some philosophical insights into how to conduct yourself in a, in a way that uh, don't do what Dragon did. What all I'm going to say about that. Uh, you want to talk about 4-H? Uh, I don't want to talk about the 4-H. Uh, oh, I have an I have a community update for for your listeners. Okay. Hey, there is going to be a big party at Tony Del Greco's house next Saturday. Yeah, well, this is BYOB, but Tony's cousin is in a rock and roll band, and they are on tour, and they are going to be setting up, and they are going to be playing in his backyard. Yeah. And I, I just, this is a disclaimer uh, to any of the, the younger listeners of this program. Tony DG's parties are not PG. They are straight R. So you are not, mm-hmm. not invited or welcome. <laughs> yeah. Man, the last time he threw a party, I got so drunk that I, uh, I married two big fat twin sisters. <laughs> like those dang McGuire twins? Did, yeah. did, did, did they get up on a motorcycle? <laughs> Take a picture? Yeah. yeah. These were two sisters, but they both uh, they both did have on cowboy hats. But they ride around on those old timey bicycles with the one big wheel in the front. Uh, yep. Now, they show up to his party, and I thought that I was so drunk I was seeing double. Next thing I know, they're both taking me to court, saying I was cheating on them with the other one. Well, that that you know, I I, I hope that judge uh, leveled with you on because who could tell the difference? They're identical. I know. They have been around each other their whole lives, you know, most of the time probably living together and, and you know, they develop their personalities right next to each other with the same, uh, being the same person. How, how's any man supposed to tell them apart? Oh, they're like, oh, well, I wear a red ribbon in my hair and she wears a yellow ribbon. You're colorblind, aren't I'm you? I'm colorblind! This is this is bull. It was a bull gross hockey. miscarriage of justice. I don't know how they get that to stick. I know. I said I will take this to the highest court in the land. And as it turns out, you cannot take a divorce to the highest court in the land. They simply won't allow it. That's one of those things I never thought about, uh, seeing as I've never been divorced. Uh, can you appeal a divorce and force them to remain married to you? Yeah, they said, sir, this is not a federal case. And I said, you're goddamn right this isn't a federal case. This is a farce. They threw me out of the Supreme Court.
Well, that's that, that's just a shame. I, I, I think that all the school children in Shelby County should be learning of the case of uh, Dragon v. Shelby County. Dragon v. Two big fat ladies on old time <laughs> bicycles. Yeah. Now, now, were they represent represented together? Do they do they get identical paternity they, well, checks here's from? The thing. Or, uh, they both did have a law degree. Oh no! So they represented each other. <laughs> and I said, "This is double jeopardy. You can't do this to me. I can't testify against my own wives." As it turns out, I do not understand the law at all. I think I think you coming up with some good double jeopardy's good. What what's a double indemnity? I've heard that one before too. I did double indemnity with both of them uh on our wedding nights. Okay. Well, let's let's not elaborate on that too much here on this uh uh family program to inform the community. Uh, yeah, if you want to hear that one, you'll have to come down to Starless Storytime at the yeah. library. <laughs> well, I guess we got to talk about it. Uh, they're paying me to do this, so uh, the, the, the 4-H competitions are going on. Part of the, oh, the oh, Shelby yeah, County. I'm sorry. Yes, Shelby County Fair as well. Uh, you know, people raising their pigs, raising their cows. That's that's happening. So if if that's that's your cup of tea, you can go do it. Uh, I don't know. I, I I didn't have a good experience in 4-H. Oh, I. Uh... I actually took home third prize in the in the uh, Shelby County Fair uh, spaghetti sculpture contest one year. Spaghetti sculpture? What did you make a sculpture of? Oh, I did a I did a a, a a lifelike bust of James Dean in spaghetti bolognese. Now we we talking uh. James Dean while he was still living, or you, you, did you uh, do like a corpse? Was, was was it like spaghetti in a coffin? No, no, this was a. Uh, he had a little a little spaghetti cigarette coming out of his mouth, mm -hmm. and then he was just a big. I just coiled that spaghetti up, you know, get the perfect likeness, and then a big, just put a big glob of that bolognese. Of like his perfectly coiffed hair, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody well, that, else that did really, like really good uh, spaghetti. Geraldo Rivera that took home first. Uh, and uh, who who got the the silver medal on that one? Well, that was Judge Deacon's daughter, and uh, she just she just made a bowl of spaghetti. Oh, but she's the judge's daughter. Yeah, she said, "This is uh this is my sculpture of the Blob from the movie The Blob." Yeah, I mean, you you got to give her credit for uh, she put a whole lot of work in on it, but she she came up with a good way to cover her butt. Yeah. And when your dad's yeah. the judge of the the spaghetti sculpture contest. Well, he's the judge of the of the court too, so that's oh. A lot of people had, uh, uh, well, had I mean, to see then, him then for he traffic know, violations on yeah. Monday, so they were like, "We better vote for that girl's blob." Do, do you think that uh, when when he was judging your James Dean sculpture, he he knew at some point in time uh, he was going to have to go through multiple divorce uh, proceedings with you? Well, did, I did, know. You, did you tell him like? This will not stand, and this will not be the last you see of me, sir, Your Honor. I know that Judge Deacon is a big fan of James Dean, because sometimes he is down at the pool hall over by Handsome Dogs, mm -hmm. and he'll come in there of a weekend, and he's got on a red bomber jacket 
He's got his hair perfectly coiffed, just like James Dean. Pack of cigarettes rolled up in his white his t-shirt sleeve. And he'll he'll just shoot pool for a while, and he I think he's hoping that people will ask him if he's supposed to be dressed like James Dean. But people mostly just yell, "Hey Elvis!" at him. Nah. And he'll get back on his motorcycle and ride away. I think James Dean's a a, a great uh, former star, you know star star to model yourself after because he died so young that people it's don't very know what to... he would look like as a, as an older older man. So you could say like, "Well, I look better than James Dean would have if he would continued living." <laughs> he he li- he was living harder and faster than me. I've I've kept myself in slightly better shape than James Dean would have been if he had lived 20 years longer. Yeah, that's so I'll tell you, that sure you shit look better than he does now. Yeah. <laughs> hey. My apologies to everybody out there in Radio Land. Uh, I didn't mean to conjure up images of a, a decaying corpse. Well, that's okay. I, I, I think that that is uh, within within our rights on on this show. I don't think we're gonna get any angry angry letters on that one. Uh, did they? Did uh, who who gets to eat the spaghetti sculptures when when the competition's over? Oh, that, whichever they have. Whichever dog wins the fattest dog pageant, they just let him go crazy on all that spaghetti. <laughs> I wish I'd known about that because uh, I, I I tried to enter the animal husbandry contest, <laughs> and I thought that the animals would uh, know know how to do this, but uh, it took a whole lot of work on my part to to get those animals to, to, to husband together. <laughs> and nobody ever told me that you couldn't husband a dog to a donkey. And so what a fool I made of myself uh, right in front of everybody in Shelby County. And yeah, I remember that. The, the jokes were cruel and uh it's followed me to this very day. Uh, I, I, I thank goodness that they let me have this uh, show uh, re- recorded live to audio tape. Because uh, this, this is where I'm from, and I love this place. And I'm, I'm glad that you guys are letting me back into your homes after all that mess. I, I do apologize. It was purely me being uh, poorly educated by, by, by our <laughs> local, lo- local schools. I remember that you came up on stage and you had a donkey and a dog and a step ladder and you said Behold You are about to witness a great becoming <laughs> But uh Anyways, uh, that's that's neither here nor there, and I, I guess I can let bygones be bygones. Go out and check out the 4-H stuff. There's some good stuff down there. I hope they still do that thing where they let the dog eat all the the, the spaghetti. And if anybody makes any mistakes, don't let it uh, haunt them for their entire lives. Yeah, listen. If you can't if you can't make mistakes and bounce back from it at the 4H fair, I don't know where you can. Yeah, that's true. That is how I met my fifth wife. Oh yeah. Yeah. By making a mistake at the 4H fair. Well, that uh, see what happened was. That is, I, I took my son mm-hmm. down there, and I probably lost him. It, it happens. There, I mean, it's a madhouse down there. There's all kinds of people. Yeah. I lost him to leukemia. Now... 
was it uh, got like a quick acting? It's just like wait, was there some sort of uh, leukemia in, uh, exhibit down at the 4-H fair where they said like this 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 pinprick will give you leukemia, so don't get too close. And he, I, I don't they know. Had a, they had a special exhibit that was uh, <clears throat> it was put on by some Navy recruiters trying to get kids from the high school to sign up, and they had they had brought in a, a chemical weapons lab. To show to show these these you know, you know these young fellas what kind of stuff they could be doing in the navy, and they said this is look we're what we've got here is a a laboratory that we've been trying to design a, a form of fast acting contagious leukemia. Oh no. And well, they set that thing up in between the fattest dog contest and the spaghetti. <laughs> and I was on stage. I was I was coming I was coming up to the stage to take my third place ribbon. And they said, "Everybody get out of the way! The fattest dog in town." <laughs> I'm sorry. It still it still makes me so sad. The fattest dog in the whole town is making a beeline for all that spaghetti. He got too hungry. He knocked over that mobile chemical weapons lab. And it landed right on my son. That's that is one of the saddest stories I've ever heard. Your your little son down there rooting his papa on in a four H competition. No, he was not rooting me on. Just to be uh, just to be clear, he he his mom had told him to tell me that he hoped that I was gonna lose, and then he went to go watch a Michael Jackson impersonator. Oh no! Well, I guess that's that's something you always got to remember with four H. You know, three of those H's are. Health, honor, and happiness, and that fourth one is harm. So always watch out for the fourth H. Yeah. Because when 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 you uh, spread spread your competitions out over so many different styles and different things, and wanting to make the biggest of this, and you know have the fastest of that. And you invite science into it. Anytime you invite science into something, there, there, there's, there's a, there's a chance things are going to go bad. And they did. Let me tell you. But I did, as I said, I bounced back from it. I, I did look pretty sad when it happened, and that got Judge Deacon's daughter to feeling sorry for me. And. Wouldn't she know it? We ran right across the street to the courthouse and we eloped right then and there. Oh, man. Well, I guess when when, when God uh, closes a, 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 a sun door, he opens a new wife window. That is that is 100% one, correct. And I can say that 100% of the times that I have lost one of my sons, I have gained a new wife. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the, the time after that was when my teenage son turned 18 and uh, my current wife left him with him. And uh, that, that was how I ended up uh, marrying her sister. Does it bother you that you couldn't do something like, like that she didn't have a daughter from a previous marriage that you could then be like, I'm going to do the same thing, so you don't got one up on me. I mean... I mean, it's it's still pretty bad uh, leaving with somebody's sister, but not... Like, I think she did you dirtier than you did her. I'm and not a not guy who likes way. to... I'm not a guy who's into people's daughters. I'm a guy who's into people's sisters, okay? Like, that's... 
That's my wheelhouse. I'm not Mr. Steal Your Daughter. I'm Mr. Steal Your Sister. Okay, well, that, that's, that's fair to say, and uh, I hope at this point in time, everybody listening is uh, suitably informed about what's to come in the next few months, and, uh, you know, look, look forward to the, the summer edition of uh, Phil's radio show about Shelby County community. Uh, it, it'll be, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make all the tapes. I'll, I'll, and you know that we put those cardboard boxes under the stand so you can bring the old tapes back like if if you want to listen to it again feel free to hold on to it but if you bring it back that's much appreciated so I'm not you know going out of pocket buying too many too many dang tapes uh, but uh, hope you've enjoyed this and, and I hope to see you at all these events and maybe if, if, if you're just uh feeling lonely come come and look for me in that field south of town i'm down there most nights i i would also just like to add that if uh anybody is looking to party on july 4th weekend uh i will be marrying my seventh wife down at the good church Uh, and i would encourage you to come there we are gonna have free beer and a better band than what's playing at Anthony Del Greco's house that same night where my current wife, soon to be ex, is going to be hosting her finally free from that asshole party is what she's calling it. They are going to have light beer. We're going to have full body bud heavies. Alright, well I know, know what choice I'm going to make. Alright, thanks for having me on your show. Oh, you're always welcome. We 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 do this uh seems more and more often. Uh seeing as I buy all the tapes, nobody can stop me anymore. <laughs>